morning everybody this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College it's March the 29th we're looking at Judges and chapter 11 now we have the record of the lives of a number of judges laid out before us in these chapters the first judge is the man Jephthah now Jephthah was a mighty man of valor now I don't fully understand all that that means except that he was a man of huge military might in the hands of the Lord but he was the offspring of a prostitute and Gilead's wife bare him sons and his wife's sons grew up and they threw out Jephthah from the home and they said you will never inherit your father's house because thou art the son of a strange woman then Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob <coughs> and they were gathered vain men to Jephthah see Jephthah even in his banishment discovered that there were men that came to him because they recognized his leadership but they were vain men and it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Amal made war against Israel and the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. See, they recognized his, his might and his power in the hand of the Lord. And they said to him, come and be our captain so that we may fight against the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said to the elders, did you not hate me and expel me out of my father's house? Why are you now come in your time of distress? And they said, oh, come and be our head, head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. <clears throat> and Jephthah said, well, if you bring me home to fight against the children of Amal and the Lord delivered me, deliver them unto me, shall I then be your head? And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, the Lord be witness between us if we do not do according to our words and the people made him head and captain over them and uh, Jephthah went out against the um, went out against the, the the Ammonites first of all he had a long conversation with them by messenger and he said why have you come to fight against us and they said because you took our land and he said well we didn't want to when we came out of Egypt we went all around you but you fought against us and because you fought against us we had to then fight and that's why we destroyed you and destroyed your land and took possession of your land so now he says the Lord God of Israel hath dispossessed the Amorites from before the people of Israel and should thou now possess it should you now come back in and take the land that the Lord has given us he says look we have not sinned against you but thou are, you are doing us wrong by going to war against us and the Lord will be the judge this day between you and between us however the children of Ammon they didn't listen to anything that Jephthah said to them then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah you see <laughs> right through the whole of Old Testament times when a man of God came forward to serve God in a very extra special way so the Spirit of the Lord came upon him now this is very much unlike that of being a Christian because not only could the Spirit of God come upon a man but the Spirit of God could leave a man too and the Spirit of God came upon a man to enable him to do something that was in the spiritual realm. It came upon him to enable him to do that which could not be done in the flesh. It was a spiritual work. You see, the wars of the Lord were not about Israel. They were about the Lord. And it was the Lord's work that was being done and Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said if thou wilt deliver if thou wilt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into my hands then it shall be that whosoever cometh forth from the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's and I will offer it that offer it up as a burnt offering to the Lord now this was a very rash vow 
He didn't know what, who he would meet from his house when he came home after the battle. Anyway, Jephthah went to battle and he fought against them and the Lord delivered them into his hands. And there was a very great slaughter. This was a, a massive battle. But it was simply a battle of the Lord and the Lord brought about a great victory and the children of Ammon were totally, totally subdued before the children of Israel. And Jephthah came to Mizpah and to his house and behold his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dancing. She was his only child, he didn't have any other children. And it came to pass when he saw her, he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter. He says, Thou hast brought me very low. Thou art one of them that trouble me, for I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. And she said, My father, if you have opened your mouth unto the Lord, then do to me according to that which proceedeth out of thy mouth. For as much as the Lord has taken vengeance on thine enemies, <coughs> even the children of Ammon, and she, said, and she said unto her father, Let this thing be done to me. Leave me alone for two months, that I may go up and down, and I may bewail my virginity with me and my fellows. And Jetha said, Go. And he sent her away for two months and she passed. She went with her companions and they bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. Sorry. <clears throat> and it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father and did according to all and he did with her according to the vow which he had vowed, and she knew no man. And it became a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel, they went out every year to lament the daughter of Jephthah four days in a year. You see, the children of Israel, they didn't forget this. And they, <clears throat> they remembered this great tragedy. And for four days of a year they went out and they wept. Now the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward and said unto Jephthah, Why did you go and fight against the children of Ammon? Why didn't you call us to go with you? We will burn your house with fire. And Jephthah said to them, I and my people are at great strife with the children of Ammon. And when I called you, you did not deliver me out of their hands. And when I saw that you did not deliver me out of, my ha out of their hands, I put my life in my hands. And I passed over against the children of Israel, and the Lord delivered me, delivered them into my hand. Wherefore, then why are you come to up this day to fight against me and Jephthah gathered all the men of Gilead and they fought with Ephraim and the men of Gilead smote Ephraim because they said ye Gileads are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Manassites and the Gileads took the passages of Jordan before the Ephraimites and it was so that when the Ephraimites which had escaped said, Let us go over, that the men of Gilead said unto them, Art thou an Ephraimite? And they said, No. Then they said unto them, Say now, Shibboleth. And they, Sibboleth, they said. They could not pronounce the word. So they took them and they slew them there in the passages of Jordan. And there fell at that time of the Ephraimites, 
42 thousand that could not say the word Shibboleth and Jephthah judged Israel six years and he died and was buried in one of the cities of Gilead <clears throat> then we have a number of other judges we have three we have Ibzan who judges Israel for seven years we have Elon who delivers Israel for ten years and Abdon who delivers Israel for eight years <clears throat> um, and then we have this remarkable story of the beginning of the life of Samson but the original uh, discussion is with Manoah and his wife it says the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines 40 years that's a whole lifetime for a whole lifetime the children of Israel were delivered into the hands of the Philistines why because they had forsaken the Lord and the Lord just did not deliver them into the hands of the Philistines they were the other judgments of God that came upon the children of Israel and we see that so immediately because there was a certain man of Zorah and of the family of the Danites and his name was Manoah and his wife was barren you see barrenness was something that would be unknown in Israel if Israel were faithful to the Lord and the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said behold thou art barren and bearest not but thou shalt conceive and bear a son now therefore beware I pray thee do not drink wine or strong drink nor any unclean thing for thou shalt conceive and bear a son no razor shall come upon his head the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb and he shall deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines <clears throat> then the woman came and told her husband said a man of God came to me and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God very terrible and I asked him where he was and, and he didn't tell, tell me his name but he said to me thou shalt conceive and bear a son and you're not to drink wine or strong drink or to eat an unclean thing and the child will be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death then Manoah entreated the Lord and said O oh my Lord let the man of God which thou didst send come unto us and teach us what we must do unto the child that shall be born this is a very wise man he just wanted to get it right and the Lord listened to the voice of Manoah and the angel of the Lord came again to the woman as she sat in the field and Manoah her, her husband was not with her and the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said the man of God appeared to me uh, that came to me the other day and Manoah went with his wife and came to the man and said and said unto him art thou the man that speaks unto the woman and he said I am and Manoah said now let thy words pass come to pass how shall we order the child um, how shall we do unto him what is it that you want us to do to him to bring him up properly for you <clears throat> and the angel of the Lord said to Manoah of all that I said unto the woman let her beware she may not eat of any unclean thing sorry she may not eat of anything that comes from the vine um, she's not to drink wine or strong drink nor to eat an unclean thing as I have commanded her to observe and Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord I pray thee let us detain thee till we have made ready a kid for thee and the angel of the Lord said if you did detain me I still wouldn't eat of thy bread <clears throat> and even if you will offer a burnt offering you must offer it unto the Lord and Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord and Manoah said unto the angel what is the what is your name that uh, that when thy sayings come to pass we may give thee honor and the angel of the Lord said why do you ask after my name it is secret so Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock before the Lord and the angel did wondrously and Manoah and his wife looked on you see the angel of the Lord he must have caused that offering to be burnt up to the Lord and it came to pass when the flame went up towards heaven upon the altar off the altar the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar 
<coughs> Manoah and his wife looked on and they fell on their faces to the ground and the angel of the Lord did not appear to Manoah and to his wife again then Manoah knew that it was an angel of the Lord <coughs> And Manoah said to his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. And his wife said to him, well, if the Lord was wanting to kill us, then he would have not received the burnt offering and the meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have shown us all these things, um, nor would he no no would as at that time have told us such things as these. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew and the Lord blessed him. And notice this, notice this. It says the spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtal. See, there was going to be hope for Israel. There was going to be hope for Israel. After 40 years, there was going to be hope for Israel. And what was the hope? It's the hope of Israel is when the spirit of the Lord moves upon a man. And may I say there's only hope for the days in which we live when the spirit of God moves upon a man. May God bless you and may God be a strength and encouragement to you. And look forward to speaking to you tomorrow. God willing. Bye for now.